Men Wanted, the hazardous journey to the South Pole. Small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger. Safe return, doubtful. Honour and recognition in case of success. In speaking of it afterwards, Ernest Shackleton said that the response was so overwhelming to his appeal that it seemed as though all the men of Great Britain were determined to accompany him. Ernest Shackleton supposedly put this advert in the paper talking about his discovery voyage to Antarctica in 1914. It said that Ernest Shackleton never achieved any of his goals. He lost the race for the pole and failed to cross the Antarctic continent. He died of a heart attack on the quest expedition in 1922 at the age of 47. Yet Sir Raymond Priestley said this, For scientific leadership, give me Scott. For swift and efficient travel, Amundsen. But when you're in a hopeless situation, when there seems to be no way out, get on your knees and pray for Shackleton. I want to tell you the story of the endurance, the story of the expedition that Shackleton went on from 1914 to 1916. Shackleton took a hand-picked crew of 28, including one stowaway, a spurned applicant, from Buenos Aires to South Georgia Island and into the frozen Weddell Sea. The ship soon encountered an unexpected density of pack ice. After more than two months of halting progress, endurance became hopelessly icebound. The grand expeditionary plan was done for. The new goal was to hunker down and prepare to spend the winter in the ice. Sled dogs were moved off the ship and into igloos on the ice, and the ship was converted into a winter habitat. To maintain morale, the crew exercised on the ice and played games indoors. Frank Hurley, the expedition's photographer, entertained himself by tromping around and making dramatic compositions with the trapped ship and ice formations. In his dark room next to the ship's engine, he skillfully developed and preserved his glass plate negatives in nearly frozen chemicals, the skin on his fingertips splitting and cracking. Meanwhile, the ship drifted with the movement of the ice flows around it, at the mercy of their immense crushing mass. On October the 27th, 1915, the ship was squeezed to the breaking point, and Shackleton gave the order to abandon endurance. With conditions now more dire than ever and no room for dead weight, Shackleton ordered the four weakest sled dog pups and the carpenter's cat, Mrs Chippy, to be shot. Hurley, the photographer, waded into the wreck to retrieve his photos. With Shackleton's help, he set aside the best 120 of his plates and smashed the remaining 400. He ditched his bulky cameras, keeping only a vest pocket Kodak, and a few rolls of film. After a brief attempt at a march, the crew built a camp on the ice, retrieving supplies and lifeboats from the Endurance until it finally sank on November the 21st. After another abortive march, they settled in for a more than three month stay at Patience Camp. We are alive and well, and we have stores and equipment for the task that lies before us. The task is to reach land with all the members of the expedition. It is hard to write what I feel. Ernest Shackleton, October the 27th, 1915. Supplies dwindled. The remaining dogs were eaten and still the 28 men drifted. Land was distantly visible but inaccessible across the broken ice. On April the 8th, 1916, the flow they were living on began to break up. The 28 men crowded into three lifeboats and began to navigate a treacherous maze of ice and sea, aiming in the direction of what they hoped was a whaling outpost. About a week later, they made landfall on Elephant Island, a rocky crag inhabited only by penguins and seals. 
It was their first taste of terra firma in 497 days. But their journey was not over. They were laughing uproariously, picking up stones and letting handfuls of pebbles trickle between their fingers like miners gloated over hoarded gold, said Ernest Shackleton. From Elephant Island, the only human settlements they had a chance of reaching were the whaling stations on South Georgia Island, 920 miles away. Shackleton ordered one of the 22 and a half foot lifeboats, the James Caird, to be fortified and prepared for a perilous open sea crossing. On April the 24th, 1916, Shackleton set out with five men and a month of provisions. He knew that if they did not reach help after a month, they were doomed anyway. The rest of the men stayed behind on Elephant Island, building a makeshift shelter out of the other two lifeboats. For 14 gruelling days, the men on the James Caird endured gale-force winds, monstrous waves and a constant soaking of freezing spray. The little boat was perpetually coated in ice and in danger of capsizing. Finally, they made it to the southern coast of South Georgia Island. The men were exhausted and the boat was nearly sunk. There was one last hurdle. The human settlements were on the north side of the island. In one final burst of effort, Shackleton and two others made a non-stop 36-hour crossing of the island's mountainous and uncharted interior. On May the 20th, they at last reached civilization. It would take another three months to return through the pack ice surrounding Elephant Island, but on August the 30th, 1916, the last of the men were rescued and safe. Aside from the dogs and the carpenter's cat, no one died. Relative success amidst a horrendous expedition. And yet, people followed Shackleton on his next expedition. What's my point? I've got two. The first is this, and it's said by Leonard Sweet, a leader's job is to rise to the occasion to imagine the best possible future and to tell the truth about how we get there. Do you remember that advert from the beginning? Jesus made a similar advert and yet people still follow him because of the honesty but also because of the promise of a greater reward. In Mark 10, 17 to 27, it says this, and I'm reading from the message version. As he went out to the street, a man came running up, greeted him with great reverence and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, Why are you calling me good? No one is good, only God. You know the commandments. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat. Honour your father and mother. He said, Teacher, I have from my youth kept them all. Jesus looked him hard in the eye and loved him. He said, There's one thing left. Go sell whatever you own and give it to the poor. All your wealth will then be heavenly wealth. And come, follow me. The man's face clouded over. This was the last thing he expected to hear, and he walked off with a heavy heart. He was holding on tight to a lot of things, and not about to let it go. Being a disciple carries a lot of privilege with it. The knowledge and presence of Jesus, the secret to life and love and more. But it is a journey that has its own perils and darkness and struggles. There are things you have to leave behind, and you may never be the same again. But the rewards are left to you to decide if it's worth it. Shackleton made his men want to follow him. He did not force them to do so. In the process, he changed the way they viewed themselves and the world. His work continued to inspire his men for as long as they lived. Behind every calculated word and gesture lay the single-minded determination to get the best 
out of people. My second point is to focus on what Jesus and Shackleton decided to do. They decided, both of them, to do the thing that they could do to bring life. Shackleton focused on the whole well-being of those around him. What I didn't mention in my story before was that when the endurance was sinking, it was Shackleton himself who on his last trip on and off the ship before it sank, opted to pick up a banjo rather than armfuls of extra food. It's said that he had a unique ability to manage physical survival together with the survival of the spirit. Shackleton's leadership is all about providing the means to live. Shackleton's leadership was founded on the basic principles of maintaining joy and hope and pride, inspiration, celebration, recognition, personal fulfilment and purpose. It was about being a friend first and a boss second. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't just offer people food when he fed 5,000. He didn't just offer them his words. He offered them something that was going to bring them life and life in all its fullness. And so I guess as we journey into the unknown together, as we struggle, as we become disciples and seek to follow Jesus, Each of us has a role as followers of Christ, but also as leaders in the world around us. What are we going to do to help other people to find life? If Shackleton taught us anything, it's that the best leaders don't have all the successes, but are the ones who have a team of people around them who feel alive, who feel worth something, who feel important. How are we leading in this world? 